OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. All right, so some people are still arriving, but I think we can get started slowly. And anyway, I can repeat little by little. Um, it's a workshop, so it's a follow along, right? So what I do on my computer, I strongly invite you to do the same on your computer. And this is the best way to learn. And if you have questions, if you're online, don't hesitate to type them in the chat. I have my chat here on my screen. Um, and I think we can get started. We'll see this because yeah, it is a very short time between the presentation. So maybe people will come later. All right. So this workshop is about Google Forms. Um, I wonder if you've used Google Form already. Like, do you know? Do you use it? Do you often use it? You never use it ever, ever. What is your knowledge of the tool? So you can type your answer. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I've used it. Um, I've been given forms and answered forms, but I've never created forms. Okay, all right, cool. So it's an, another way to use it. So that's great. And uh, online, you can also type your answers if you want to share. Um, so hopefully at the end of this workshop, you will be totally um, able to create your own forms and you will see that it is really cool. I am a fan of Google tools because they are, once you know, easy to use and, uh, and very, very useful too. So let's get started. So my name is Celine um, and I teach at California College of Communication. It is an adult education school in Santa Clara in California. And I teach uh, ESL to level five and level six, so the upper level. Okay, so yeah, definitely it is good. Someone says that they use it more and more. And yeah, once you start, it is hard to actually uh, prepare any um, assessment on, on, a Google, on a Google Doc or something else. All right, so let's get started. So first, I think the first thing is to know where it is in your Google Drive. So I will do that with you. Maybe I will put my chat on my other screen. So I am here and I, you know, you can access your drive here, for example, Google Drive. And then on your drive, you will click on new in the top left-hand corner and new will open a Google form, all right? So that's what you have when you arrive. You have, so it is, there is no title, all right? And of course there is nothing and it is always the same color, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is that you will start to give a title to your form, right? So you just, so I invite you to do that at home, right? So, so that you can create your own form as I create this one. So you will click here, right? So you double click, it selects everything. And so we are going to call this quiz session one quiz. All right, okay, so you can click out and then your quiz is created. And here in the top left-hand corner, you have still an un un untitled form. And if you click, it automatically gives the title to your form, all right? So that's the first step. You have created your quiz and then you have given a title to your quiz. Uh, so I can share all these, it's a Jamboard. Uh, I can share my Jamboard presentation if you want to remember um, if you've never used it. So I use mainly uh, Google Form to make some quizzes, right? And to do that, you need to go to settings. So it is here, you have question, responses, setting. So you click on setting. And here in the setting, you have made this a quiz. So that's definitely what I want to do. I want this to be a quiz, all right? And then, uh, you have several things you need to do here. So you want to give default question point value. I usually give five and I prepare like 20 questions so that it's over a hundred, but you can give 10, you can really like, some are more interested in like, how the questions can get 10 points. You can choose to give one point. It really depends on you. 
my default value is always five. So just for the people who are just arriving, we've created a form and then you go to setting, you make it a quiz, right? It was not, so it selects that. Usually I don't check anything here because it is probably in my form already. And then the response is, so you click in the little carrot and you will collect emails because you want to have the email of your students. And then, which is very interesting too, you want to limit to one answer from your students, right? Because they can take the quiz and then they don't like their result and then they take the quiz again. <laughs> so even if you have the date on it, still it is better like if they have only one uh, way to, um, one, one answer possible. So all these things are changing a few settings in your quiz, in your, in your form, and now it is a quiz, okay? So you go back to your, um, so we've done that, right? You selected, you make it a quiz, and then you release the marks. I always do that. I, I give the marks to my students right away, but you can decide that you don't want them to get them and you get them, they will get them later. Uh, I'd rather they have the uh, grades and the answers right away. I will tell you later because it is a good, a good uh, feature of Google um, Form. And so where are we? All right, we choose the value of the points and then you collect the emails and you limit to one response. So that's quite important. Um, and then we are going to go back to our, so let's write our first question, right? So you are going to be here, question. And then there is by default a question already here. So let's see that my first question is all right always to ask the name of my students because if they give their email and sometimes their email is 456 at gmail.com and you never know who they are. So I systematically ask for the email and also for the name. Um, and so in that case, uh, we are going to start by that. You make this a short answer. So here you type your question. My first question is, what is your name? And then I will ask a short answer so that they can type your, so you can type their name, all right? And then here you can modify the points. And obviously for the question about the name, you don't want them to, you don't want to give points. So you give zero points. We will return to the way we uh, make questions. This is why I am going pretty fast here. So you, created your first question, right? It is here and then you wrote, you wanted the name and then you decided to give zero uh, points because it is for the question. And then let's move on and create your real first question. So I have, I, would, I, I look on the left because I have another screen and I've created a template. So I want to follow that because it's what you have on, your, on, your, um, on the slides of the Google uh, Jamboard. So for example, my first question will be, I want to know the simple task of pen, all right? So that's my first question, the simple task of pen. So this question I will use for that. The first thing here, so when you add a question here, you, I was here, right? I add a question and you can, and after that choose here, multiple choice. So I am here and I have multiple choice. It is all the possibilities of questions you have here. So I will cho choose as I did before, short answer because my students will answer like right away, okay? So if I want to change the setting, you can put that in here. You can put a number, right? So that it is easier when students have some question. And then you can enter some possible answers. So for example, you are going to say spent and maybe you want to write it in with a capital letter uh, because it is a bit touchy, um, Google Forms. So if you don't answer, uh, if you don't post several possibilities, sometimes it will be wrong, particularly when they type the answers. So I always, and to one with uh, like a uh, um, lower case and then uppercase and then done. So create your 
question and then choose the short answer, all right? And then you can enter the answer. I will go back to um, inputting answers later too, but that's just for the short answer. You type your answer up your question, and then that's the first question done. So we have used the short answer, okay? You type your question, and then you choose the number of points because yeah, you want to make sure that it counts. So if you judge that this is a very easy question, so maybe you want to give only one point, why not, okay? I will leave to five because I think my slides are like that later. So that's the first thing, you give the points so you can go upper, like higher and lower. And then where are we here? So that's for the short answer um, and sometimes, surprisingly, it didn't do it now, but sometimes Google Forms will actually propose a possible answer. Um, and uh, so it's, it's even faster. And so what I wrote here is that what I said before, right? Like, because Google is a little sensitive to tiny differences, I always enter at least two. Maybe sometimes I even add, for example, um, so my answers are here. Maybe you can have spent with a period and then you can add spent with a period. So you have many possibilities. Maybe like, you know that some students, they put a space before the answers. So you have many, many answers possible uh, for your short answer. Uh, so that's pretty much what you can do for a short answer. You can ask more complicated question. I tend not to use this device too much because as I said, like tiny differences might make it wrong. Uh, so I, I don't particularly use that. I use it a lot for uh, multiple choices or like synonyms or stuff like that. We will see that later. Um, so let's add another question and this time it will be multiple choice. So we are here, right? We have created the name and then we have created our second, our first question. So add a question and then here we are going to name it number two. And the question I type is yesterday, I, and then I will decide to do that, shopping. All right, so you wanna send your students to pick the right, answer. So you can give several answers. So you can go, go, went, has gone, I have gone, and then will go. So that's how you type your answers. You can type many. I don't give two because I teach upper levels. So I want them to think a little more. If you teach lower levels, you can maybe give only two choices. Uh, it is really up to you. Um, but yeah, like you, you can choose whatever you decide and what is best for your level. So that's for multiple choice, right? So you choose here, multiple choice is this one. So you have short answer, paragraph is exactly the same as, as short answer. And then multiple choice, so that's what you pick. And then you can give several answers to your form. So that's our second question, all right? So we type a question. And then we added our answers, all right? You can add an image, but we can see that we will see that a little later. And then comes the time to choose the correct answer, right? Because your form needs to give the correct answer to your students. So for that, you will click here. You remember here, we used that before to change the number of points here, right? And so we are going to use this one to enter the right answer. So once again, if you choose to give more or less points, it is up to you. And then once I am here, I have this little and, and yesterday I went shopping, all right? So this is what you can do. You can decide, so what you must do actually, and then you can decide to add feedback. For example, if the correct, if the answer is incorrect, you can say that yesterday, all right, it asks for the simple path. And then you just say that. And if you want to, um, so you can always modify, right? Edit with the little pen, because if it's a correct answer and you want to kind of congratulate your students, you can say, yeah, but you don't have to say anything. Um, I add some feedback when the questions are a little complicated. It is interesting. Um, could you email me your presentation, please? Yes. 
So I uh, well, I can post it in the in the. I cannot email right now; it will take me too long. But I can post it in the chat so that you can open it. Um, all right, sorry, I didn't see your question. So let's uh, just keep this one, okay? And then done, and you're done, and everything is uh, ready. So you created your first question, which was a short answer. And then you created your second question, which was a multiple choice. You wrote your questions, you wrote several possible answers, and then you gave the right answer. And you gave a feedback and then done, okay? So you can see here, when I click here, like I don't see anything. That's basically what your students see. And then if I want to change something, I just need to click on my question, right? So each time this is blue here, it means that you are in editing mode. And at any time, if you want to check what your quiz look like, you can click on the eye here. And this is what your students will see. Um, so yeah, so for now, and then you can close. And if you close, you return to your previous, or if you click on the um, little pen here, pencil, it means that it will open the form and you can edit. So it is exactly what I have here, right? So up, I will close that window. So we did multiple choice. Now we are going to move to a next question. So we are adding one. And this time you just go, we just go down logically, right? So we need short answer, paragraph is the same, multiple choice. Now let's go to checkbox. So it is our question number three, all right? And question number three will be uh, tomorrow. It and then 10, all right, so I'm quizzing my students on tenses, and then you enter several possibilities. Is going to, it is raining, it will rain, and then it rained. So once again, as I told you, I quiz like upper levels, but if you quiz lower levels, you can give less, like a, a, a smaller number of answers. I am not going to give the answers for this on purpose because we are going to see uh, what it does after, right? When we test the quiz. So I am not entering the um, answers, but I will give the example again later. So, and this one checkbox, the difference between checkbox and multiple choice is that we can um, choose several, right? So tomorrow it is going to rain and tomorrow it will rain. It is prediction. And if I want my students to understand, I will write that it is prediction. And so we can use both, all right? So, but I will remove one at least and then done. So checkbox, several answers possible, multiple choice, only one answer possible. So remember that if you're asking your students a question and you want to get several answers, uh, so far, so good. I don't have any questions. No, okay. So let's go on going down on our possibilities of questions. So we were in the checkbox. Now we are going to go to the drop down. So the drop down menu can actually be the same as this one. Uh, so let me. Um, so tomorrow it. Mm -hmm. So I could copy, but I need to change the answers because remember, if you need to collect two answers, it's only the checkbox that can do that. So the drop down menu, this time I am going to write, it's going to rain. And then oh, it's going to rain, yeah. And then um, is raining. And then was raining. And then rain. Okay. And so I do the same, oh, rained. Okay, so I go here again, answer question, um, and yeah. And then tomorrow it is going to rain and then done. And I forgot the, so you, you can always change things like afterwards, okay? It's very easy to open, to access. So it is going to, I didn't add the verb, so it doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> it is going to rain, it is raining, it will rain or it rains. 
So we've done the multiple choice checkbox and then drop down. So now drop down if you want to see the difference between the checkbox and the multiple choice and the drop down. Let's do that again. Let's click on the eye. And then you see exactly what the students are seeing, right? So multiple choice, it will be round. And then checkbox, it will be a square. And multiple drop down, well, it is a drop down menu, right? Like they need to choose and then they click. So that's how it works. So once again, I will close here. But remember, like basically, if you want to access the editing of your quiz, you can click on this little pencil at the bottom of your page. So we've added many questions already. We have another one that I don't use very often, but it can be interesting. So let's add another question. As usual, we use the little plus, okay? And then it is what they call, so file upload, I never use it to be honest, um, because it is for the students to upload and, and I don't use that if I need them to uh, communicate with me, to be honest. So I will use that. Um, so up question number five, all right. And uh, so it is, it needs to be gradation, right? So I'm going to write good. I'm going to write excellent. And then the question is, how is this presentation? Okay. And then you just get like, your question is over, right? You gave good, you gave excellent. If you want to see what it looks like, always clicking here. And this is what it will look like, right? So it is good, okay? So I click here. And this is what your students will see at the display when you give them the quiz. Um, I don't use very often uh, this uh, device, right? Let me see. I think I had like, okay. So this, we've done that. Dropbox, we did it. So yeah, linear scale, I don't use it very often, but so this is my second set of slides, so I will put it here. So I don't use it very often, but it can be very interesting, for example, to evaluate an activity with your students to know if they like it or not, right? Um, to get feedback from your students from any type of uh, activity, uh, if they understood, uh, if the questions were clear and so on. So I, I think it can be good um, maybe at the end of a form to add it to get the feedback from your students linear scales. Now multiple grid, I use it quite a lot. So let's go back to what is this? Okay, let's go back to my form. If you're asking to request access both links or shivers. Okay, let me, um, everybody with, okay. So it should be okay for number two. Sorry about that. And anyone with the link is a viewer. So you should refresh and now it should work. Let me know, Susanna. Um, multiple choice grid. Again, we come here, we add a question and we go down and we choose multiple choice grid. So I usually use that for synonyms. So I ask the students to find the synonym, right? So it is our question number six. So for example, I, I typed something very easy, right? The sky and then grass and then cloud and then the sun and the earth, right? And so I have some different answers. For example, we have green and then we have blue. I guess we have yellow and then we have brown. Um, what is missing? The sky is blue, the grass is green, the cloud is white. All right, so you just enter on one side your items and then the possible answers on the other side. And you click here and this is where you are going to choose what are the answers, right? So the sky is blue, the grass is green, the clouds are white, and then the sun is yellow, and then the earth is brown. So I ask, I, I use that a lot with the synonyms with my students. For example, we do a lot of um, podcasts, and there are many, many adjectives in the podcast they don't know, and there are many verbs they don't know. And I like 
the system of learning just a synonym and not a definition because they will remember uh, easily. So this is a good way to assess that they remember the meaning of the, the verbs, for example. Verbs and adjectives, it works very well. After that, finding synonyms for a noun is not very easy, um, but adjectives, verbs, remember this feature. And then done, all right. This one, of course, counts 25 points because you have five items, right? So each time it will be five points. I will check what my slide, what it looks like. So I have my beautiful questions here. And then I have all these possibilities here. So this is once again, what your students will see. Uh, let me see if I go along, have I missed something? So yeah, points are multiply, right? So it is also a, a very easy way to assess your students and vocabulary. And, um, and they like it actually, uh, they like the exercise. All right, and so that's what we did, multiple grid, and then when you click preview, this is what you see, all right. Now, it is the same thing with, uh, so let's add another question. And it is our question number seven. And this time you are going to, let me see what I did on the other side. Uh, oh, you are asking if adjectives, for example, are negative or positive, right? Like, do they express something negative or positive? So I picked, uh, so the answer is it is positive or it is negative, okay. Uh, oh, I didn't choose the right one, see? So tick box, we said. So I click here to change, right? And then I go down, tick box grid. And uh, so, yeah, so I want the opposite action. So positive. And then negative, come on. And I have selected a uh, different, so dreadful, exciting, horrible, uh, atrocious, okay. And I have two more, let's do just marvelous and then I decided to go for accelerating. Okay, so these are positive or negative adjectives and then I go to the answer key and this is how it looks like. So positive, exciting, marvelous, exciting, oh, I made the typo, all right. And negative, dreadful, horrible, atrocious. Oh, and this shouldn't be here. So let's delete that. So if you need to delete something, it is very easy. See, I saw it in my possible answers. I have negative here and it shouldn't be here. And I have a typo here. So I say done. I just scroll down. Here negative, I just click on the cross to remove, all right? You can also here decide to put it before or put it after. You can change the order, all right? And then I saw that accelerating, I, all right? So that's perfect. Let's try again. So the words are okay. I have six possibilities and I have two um, answers on my first row. So students here, how they will see is like that. So it is, it is getting bigger and bigger and it doesn't take very long. So it is very, very um, um, easy to create. I have a question. Uh, all right, so we have sure. Um, how did you get that tick box grid? Because I only have multiple choice grid or checkbox grid. I don't have that so tick box. Here? Yeah, how did you get on that? On the side? Oh, yeah, no, mine so, only has checkbox grid. Is it the same as checkbox grid? I don't is know there? because I don't have that. But yeah, probably is. Does it give you? Uh, does it display like the little square or the little circles on your screen? Oh yeah, it has the square. Yeah. So if it is the square, like I guess you can enter multiple answers. Okay. So it's not the same noun. It's the same name. It's interesting, right? <laughs> That's the mystery of technology. But I think that anyway, you can you can do the same. You can create the same question. Is there a free version and a paid version of that? No, no, no. It's Google, so everything is always free. So no, and I I don't know. Like 
If I create a new question, for example, and then I have multiple choice, right? So I open here. No, it's tick, tick box. Multiple choice grid, tick box grid. I don't know. I have no explanation for that at all. <laughs> to be honest, I don't know. But if the, the result is the same, it doesn't really matter. Like if you manage to create that and then to have like it look like that when your students um, they uh, complete, I think it is fine. Uh, it's a mystery. All right. So now we are going to add some images to make the uh, the form a little more pleasant. So the question is number eight. All right. And then my question is, what is the name of this animal, right? And I will click on option one. And then I go here in the little icon. And if you click on the icon, it opens this uh, window. It, it opens the window the same way when you add some images on Google um, Jamboard. So upload from the computer. But I think that for this, it is very easy to, go, to use Google Images. So I want an elephant, all right? So Google is going to look for images of an elephant. And then, well, actually, I am not doing what I wanted to do. I wanted to add the image here, right? What is the name of this animal? And then next to the question, you have this little icon with the photo. So I will do that here. Um, so again, elephant. And then you click on the elephant, you insert, all right? So you can decide that you want it to be in the middle. You can change it if you don't like it. You can put it on the left, on the right, and you can remove it. You can add caption, but here I won't because the question is about the name. So, um, and I will write here. So it's an elephant, possibility one. It's a tiger, possibility number two. It's a giraffe, possibility number three. Okay, and I click answer, and the answer is elephant, but I'm not very happy about the fact that elephant is the first possible answer, so I will just put it in the second. So you have your question, you click on the little icon for the photo, and then it goes and it opens this. So if you have nice photos on your computer, if you want to use your personal photos, you're more than welcome. But to be honest, for this type of question, I always use Google Images. Um, you can decide, for example, uh, let's see, if you make a true or false, um, let me add a question here. I will not number it, but I will just show you. Like, um, um, so we are going to use now uh, images for an answer, right? So it is the opposite. Here we have an image, and the question is about this image. Now we are going to number nine question. And it will be using an image to ask which is an elephant. Uh, which is an elephant, all right. And then you are going to choose. So in that case, option one, at the end of the line, you have an image, right? So you will go and you will do the same. So you will take an elephant image. All right, we we'll take the same. And after that, you will use, we're just going to follow what we did before, right? So to add an answer, yeah, you just need to, you add add option, you just click, like press here, and then it opens the same. Here, let's put the tiger. All right, so this one looks very pretty. And then up, add an option. And I click on the image again, and this time I will choose the giraffe. And I will find a pretty image of a giraffe. Look at that. Oh, I insert, and this is my question. Uh, and I choose always answer key, all right? And you scroll down. And of course, obviously, this is an elephant. Once again, you don't really want your answer to be the first. Maybe you want it to be the last. You're just too smooth. Uh, you move up and down. You can do that with your questions too. Each time you have these little, um, it's actually kind of double kebab, and here too you have it. So you can move up and down your question, 
like this question, if I wanted to be before this one, I can do that. I can just change, right? So it is quite easy, but I want them to be in the same order. So let's go back here. So we added an image as a question. We added images as answers. Um, what I do sometimes is that uh, if you have true or false, instead of writing each time true or false, I just add a little image. So like that, for example, the check for the true. And then you look for like true. Oh, up. Come on. Here you will add false. Okay. So false. So you pick like this one. It doesn't matter, right? I'm just showing you up. And instead of each time like having only true or false, you, you, you just have that and it appears in the form of your students like that. So it's pretty neat. The display is really nice, actually. Um, I like it a lot. And you can, if, if for example, you review it in class and it is too small because it's pretty narrow, you know, you can click here on Google and then it makes it bigger. Actually, I could have done that since the beginning of the presentation, probably. So you can really choose the size of it. And so here you can have option one or you can choose, um, let me change that because it's not very clear. So you can write your true and then you can write your false. And then ask your question. If you want to choose that it is correct, you will do that. And if you don't like it, you just delete the image here and delete the image here and it keeps only the text. Um, all right, so we've created many, many questions. Do you have any questions about creating questions? Um, do you find it easy to use or a little complicated? What is your feeling? I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. Um, on one of them, I instead of pressing the plus sign for the next question, I press that equal sign. So how do I get out of there? Oh, so you press that, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you click here and you don't want that, you just click on the um, on the uh, here on the carrot on the uh, kebab, and you can delete. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I will. We will talk about sections later because it is interesting to add some sections sometimes. All right, so we have beautiful questions. Any other interrogation? Oh, it was so fast. I'm sorry, Susanna. So always remember two things. You choose, so you add a question here with the little plus, okay? And then you add, um, oh, so it is interesting actually, let me show you. So let's say that here I forgot a question. I can click here, all right? So this is where I am. And I can add a question just under it. So just remember after that to change the number of your questions. But you can add a question between another question. It, it is not a problem. So most of the time, you add a question at the end. You press plus. And this is where you decide what um, is your question. If it is multiple choice, check boxes. Remember, more than one answer on check boxes. Drop down one answer, and then the display is just different. Um, Linear scale to know like the appreciation of your students about an activity, for example, and then multiple choice grid, one possible answer, tick box grid, several possible answers. After that, you can add the time, you can add the date, but I think it is written somewhere already. I usually don't do that. It doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Where is, oh, okay. So it is here. So it doesn't matter. We don't care about that. All right. So, um, that's all the question you can ask. Always remember that it is here. You add a question. Here you choose your question. And also very important is to input the answer. Because if there is no answer, we will see now what it makes actually when there is no answer um, uh, answered in your Google uh, form. So let me see. So we did that. We put some photos. And then we did that too. So you will find all the explanation on the Google Jamboard. So now we have created a cool Google form, if you want to actually share 
the link uh, of your Google form, you can come here, share, oh, share, and then copy. Uh, you need to, so let's do that again. You click here, share. Oh no, I'm, this is where I was like, okay. So send, sorry, I was confused. So send here, and then you come to the link. And then you copy the link. And then you post it here in the chat. So I will do that again, right? You go to send. And then you go to this little icon. And then you copy the link. And then you can paste it like in your classroom. You can do several different things. But um, for now, it is just to share. So normally you have created a form. So if a few of you can share so that you can see what you've done, it would be nice just to see how things are going with you guys. Uh, so feel free to share your um, link. And uh, let me see where we are. So yeah, so while I'm waiting for um, people to share their link, we are going to test or quiz, and it is quite important to notice the mistakes, right? If if there is some things that don't work properly the way you want them to work. So to do that, well, it's quite easy. You click on that, the eye. So let me just delete this one. And then I click on the eye again. So I would like you to fill out my quiz. And uh, I would like you, to be honest, to make a few mistakes because we need some mistakes, right? So please make some mistakes so that we can see how it looks like. So everybody could open my link. Recording in progress. All right. So let's just do it. Actually, I will do it too so that it is another answer. My name is Celine. And then spent. I know that yesterday I went shopping, tomorrow it is going to rain and it will rain. Tomorrow it is going to rain, this presentation. Synonyms, so I will make a few mistakes. I will just like answer randomly to this one, okay? And then negative, I will say that exciting is positive. And then horrible negative, marvelous, all right. Here, it's an elephant. And then here is the elephant, okay? So I do that. So I'm a student now, right? That's the side of the student. And the students, that's what they see. And that's how they complete it. Uh, by the way, it is very phone friendly. So they can use them on their phone. It is very easy. Uh, so quizzing, your, uh, even if they usually don't have a computer, it's really not a problem because it is a very fine display on any phone. So I am done. OK, so I will just submit. All right. And this is still what your students see, right? So the response was recorded. Now I want to view my score. And here, oh my god, I am so bad. <laughs> 27 over 70. Mm -hmm. So let's see, let's see the problem. So first here, there is a problem because I gave two answers, but only one answer is given in my quiz, okay? So I will go back to my version, right? This is still the student's version, but my version is here and I will scroll up, go back to the question, Tomorrow it is going to rain and I will add another answer. Tomorrow it will rain. And then done. And that's the magical thing about Google Form is that if you refresh, then it is correct, okay? So when it is red and there is zero point, it means that the, like here, how is the presentation? Well, that's not a very good one. But here, for example, the sky is brown. 
uh, I wouldn't want to live in the place where the sky is brown. So everything is wrong here, but it is not from your point of view. But here, for example, how is this presentation? Do you really want to give some points about this question? No. So again, I go back to my form, I click, and I remove the point. I go to zero, done. And then in the students, when they check again, there is no point lost. Lost. Okay. Um, all right. And so then you see some mistakes I made. But what is very important when you finish your, your quiz is to test it. And then so normally when you test it, I just wanted to show you how it looks like when you don't answer properly and the display of the correct answers. That's also something very great about Google Form is that your students, they will see what was wrong with their question, with their answers. And I really like that a lot. So this is when it is wrong and, and showing the right answers. But when you check your quiz, when you are happy with it and you find it very beautiful and it's done, please just click on the eyes. Fill, fill out the form, yeah. So I said I could only answer one with my email address. So now Google is telling me eh, you can answer. So to um, so complete the test properly to see if everything works, right? Here when we saw that there was one missing answer here, and then here we were giving points whereas you don't want to give points. So as a teacher, uh, except when I test my, my quiz, I never see that, right? So I will close it. What I see is that um, here, the number of responses. I have three people who responded. Quick question, when I click the link for you and it won't let me in, it, it is asking me to sign in. Oh, to sign in for like Google, Google, like in your Gmail account, I would suppose. Yeah, because it's a Google tool. So I guess that if you're not signed up as, as with your Gmail address, you cannot sign up, like you cannot complete. Yeah. So yeah, you need a Google account. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, uh, just to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. So you answered, we had problems, right? We didn't score very well. So we changed the wrong answer. Like here, there was one missing. So we added one. And here we didn't want some numbers. So basically what we did is that there was a problem and we fixed the problem. And here there was a point problem and we fixed the problem too, okay? So now um, before, let me see, because I know that I forget something somewhere. Okay, so before going to the response side, I like when things are pretty. So we are going to make our form a little prettier, okay? So to do that, you are going to, where am I, here. You are going to click on the palette here. It is written customize theme. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, I see, and you see, like I see the number of students, not well, the number of students, you're not students, but the number of people, the number of respondents, right? Now someone else has finished. So here I am, I can choose the police, right, the font. Uh, so I like Red Hat and I don't know why, but I always choose this one. What I do here also, I always make uh, the questions a little bigger and the answers 12. Uh, it doesn't cost anything to make it easier to read, right? And here we are going to choose an image because there is no image here at the top, right? So we want to choose a top image. Mm. So we're going to choose this one because it's the one you have here anyway. So this is why I choose this one. So you choose an image, right? You click and then you insert, that's what I've done. And then, oh, you have now the image and also the color is different here and it is much prettier. And then if you want to add your own image, know that it is not always easy because it needs to be 1600 by 400. Um, so let me see, I will show you. So you want to um, put uh, a photo of a bear, right? So you go to image and I will choose randomly. So it's a bit more complicated, but sometimes it is worth it. So let's just take randomly this one. I will add that to my 
image bank, which will be like there not to find it easily. I'll leave it there, all right. I save and then I go to my form and to my form image. Now I want to upload that theme. Like there are many actually, and some are very pretty. So I, I rarely use one of my photos, but sometimes I do. So upload, right? Themes are like done by Google. You can choose even your photos and then you can upload. So browse, and then it opens that. My bear is here, but then the image is very small and you need to move it. So if you want to see the paws of the bear or just the head of the bear, and very often it will be blurry because the, the, the format is different. So it is coming, right? And then according to the colors of the photo, Google will choose the best colors to put here and then here in the background. So that's also quite neat. I like it a lot. And then I always make it a little darker because the darker it is, um, you know, it uses less energy. Uh, so we can actually keep this bare because it is pretty nice. And I think I've added, let me close that. I have added uh, here, if you, um, there is a, oh, I don't remember what it is, so let me see. Because I have no memory of what, I think it is a link for, yeah, free pick. So you can choose, change the size of the image and uh, and I did it once because I wanted a logo. Uh, so you can do it, you can use free um, image um, like modification uh, software. But remember that you always need an image that is 1600 by 400. But to be honest, there are so many, 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 many here. Um, so many themes, right? And they are very colorful and they are very pretty. So there are some photos and there are some illustration for every single occasion. So I think it, it works fine. Uh, okay, so. Um, okay, all right. So yeah, so to use Google, to use any Google uh, tool, you will have to sign up in your Gmail account. Uh, but anyway, if you want to create your, um, your quiz, remember that you need to go to your drive and then from your drive, new, and then you find it here, right? Google form, and then it opens a blank one and then you create one. So to create a Google Jamboard, I did a presentation this morning. You need to open your Google drive and to create a Google uh, form, you also need to open your Google drive. Uh, all right, so let's see. So we added a photo, we changed the color and it is quite pretty. Uh, we have many questions. So maybe we want to organize the form, but let me see what is this about. Okay, so let me go to this one then. Uh, because I forgot to, because there are so many things. I forgot this, I noticed this morning that I had forgotten the entire part where you can organize your form. So. To organize the form, it is uh, one person before told me that they pressed on the equal, right? So this is where you're going to this one. You have plus to add a question here on the right side. And you have also this, you will be able to import a question from another form. This to add a title, this to add an image, to add a video, and then to add a section. All right, so let's do it in the order again. So you want to import a question because as you can see, I have many Google Forms everywhere. And so sometimes you know that you've used some questions you want to recycle. So I can close that now. I am happy with what my um, questions look like. My form is very pretty. And remember that whatever you do, in your uh, Google form, it is where it is selected that the things will happen. So if I import some questions here, they will be after number three, right? So let's see, I will choose the first one. I don't know where it is, but let's do that. So it opens this window and I have all the questions of the other form, which is very long because it is a grammar quiz and my students know that I make very, very long grammar quiz. 
<laughs> so I don't want to um, repeat. So I will choose this one and this one. You can decide to select all of them and so on. And then I import my question. And so as I said, uh, they are imported right after where I was in my form. And so they are imported the same way they were in the in your over form. So it's good if you, if I don't know, like I used it for grammar quizzes, for example, um, and um, because I was repeating one section. So I don't use it very often, but I think it is neat if you, for example, someone shares a, a form with you and there is an entire set of questions that you like, you can just import in your own uh, quiz. So I think that is neat. Um, all right. So I will delete that because I don't want to use these questions, but know that you can do it. And remember that is here, import question, and then you choose, so we can choose another one. I mean, any anything we'll do, um, what do I have? I have activity, hmm, up, oh, okay. So this is, I don't know, anything we'll do. Up. So for example, this is about like Sherlock Holmes. So it's a multiple grid with adjectives, I think. So I will choose because I really like quizzing my um, students on adjectives. So I will import three questions with synonyms. Okay, I told you I use them a lot. <laughs> so adjectives, adjectives, and adjectives. Maybe they didn't do very well the first time and I want to give them a second chance. Maybe I want to reuse questions I used like three months ago. So you can really like, it is very easy. And then you can modify them, you can move them up and down, and you can also, as I will go now, delete. So here I am on this, so you just need to click on the white part, and then you come on this one and you delete. Okay, so three, four, I'm still good. So that's to import questions from another form. Uh, as I told you before, you can move a question, right? You can just click here and then move it up and down. It is very easy. Um, there is also another way to do that I will show you later, um, that it is a little more convenient. Um, and I discover they add new features and I discover new things like very often. Um, so for example, my form, it's all like questions that are following each other, all right? So if I want to tell my students that these eight and nine questions will be about animals, okay? So remember, if I want my my um, my question to be here, I need to click above because it always inserts below. So I come here, TT, add title and description, and then I will write part two, let's say, okay, animals. All right, if I want to put it in, bold i can and then description you can add you don't need to add it is not mandatory and so when your students see the form it looks now what yeah, but i want just to see it okay so what i'm going to do because i cannot even like do stuff on my own form now individuals i am here i am deleting my answers i will show you later like less fast, but I can modify as much as I want. So now let me see my form. All right, so I'm back. Um, so here, like you have your question and then you have part two animals. So you could have, for example, part one. Let's see here, you will have up at the title, part one, and I will say grammar. I choose bold because it is more visible. And once again, I will open this eye. And so part one grammar. So the first question is always the email because you choose it, right? Your first question was about the name of your students and then part one grammar. So you have, all right. So part one grammar, we could also do like here, right? It's grammar until here. But then after your question four, it is actually um, here, up. I will add one and I will add that like, so it is really part two. 
and I will call it vocabulary, right? So once again, I am adding that, I put in it bold, and so I have to change that, which is part three now, all right? So it's, it's quite easy to modify whatever you want to modify. And then up here, part one. So it makes it clearer, and there is a way to make it even clearer. So that's a good way to make it clear if you want to keep your form in only one display, okay? But if you don't mind, you can choose to, so let me close this one and this one. So we added uh, part one. Okay, so I go back here. This was add title. I will jump to that and I will add a section, okay? So you add a section, it will open a section below. And instead of having this called part one, I will copy and I will paste here. So part one grammar. So now I don't need that anymore. I can delete. And then I can add as many sections as I want. It always opens the first section with the um, email. And I could choose to start my section here, but it makes sense to me to have the email and the name of the students before they start the real quiz, right? So part one is about grammar. And then I scroll down. Here I have vocabulary. So I will add a section and the section I will call part two vocabulary. Okay. And then I delete this one. And finally I scroll down. I have part three animals. Up, I add another section. Up, I add it here and then I can delete that. So now that's what you see, okay? But from now on, what your students see is pretty different because you've created sections. So they have a section, they will answer, and then they will click next. And as long as you haven't answered, you cannot go to the next because everywhere on my Google quiz, I checked here, required. If it is not required, the students, they don't answer and there is no reminder, okay? So you need always to have it required. So you can choose that by default and then it is always by default. So it is much better because you don't want your students to miss one question because they will miss point just because they missed one question. So on all my questions, this is required, right? So for example, this one could not be required and it wouldn't be a big problem. But for the other ones, you really want to require your answers. And so it is written like here on the student side, it appears with a little star. So everything with a red star, they need to answer. So I answer, I put my email address, I write my name, I go to the next. Now it is the section two, all right? So it is grammar and see, I can go to next, no, I can't because I haven't replied. So Google Doc will Google Form will tell me, no, no, you cannot move along because you haven't replied. So I will do it again, spend. And yesterday I went shopping and it is raining. It's going to rain. And tomorrow it is going to rain. And this presentation is good. Now I go next. So that's your responder side, right? And of course you can still go back and check your answers. So the students can fill out the entire form and then afterward they can go back to through all the sections to see if they like their answers to review and to proofread before submitting it. But here the same, like imagine I, I answer that and then here and here, and that's very good. <laughs> and then I do next, no, because one is missing. So it's a very good way to make sure they don't miss any questions. Remember, we cried on every question. All right, uh, okay, so where are we? I think we are here. Mm -hmm. Now, you can, uh, what did I want to do before that? So of course, you can decide to add a video. Like I often create quizzes with, um, about the, um, Ted Ed, for example. So you go here and then you are going to uh, type your URL. So let's say, let's see, Ted Ed, and then I will choose any of them, discover. So any one will do. Uh, come on, 
Yes. Okay. So I will work on that. Okay. So I will open it in. Oh, okay. Voilà. Uh, here, YouTube. You copy the link, and here you just copy it. You look for it. It is that. You select, and then you can add the title. You can decide to put it in the middle. All right. So I can call that Ted Ed. Okay, and that's all. Actually, I don't need to do anything more. Ted Ed. Okay, and then again, let me close that because it tells me I cannot do anything. It is here. Okay, so students can play it from here. They can make it bigger. So it, it, it works very well. Okay, so you can insert a photo if you want to make your jumbo pretty. You can insert a tree, anything you want. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's pick this one. Uh -oh, this one. All right, and then again, you can decide to make it in the middle, and then you call that big tree, okay, and then you want to make it underline, and then italic, and then like that, up, and again, you can click from here and check what it looks like, all right, so you can really add many, many different things to your form, I will just remove that because it doesn't work, so very often, I have many, um, Many Google Forms about a, a short video TED Ed and I create 20 questions. It's a good way to quiz your like listening and the listening uh, comprehension from your students. Uh, so I like that a lot. Um, and it works very well from them too. Um, all right, so let me see. Uh, we are, I think now adding uh, a link. So let's do that. For example, the part one will be actually listening. Okay, and you want to add a link here. So what you can do, let me add another one. So you click here and you do that, add the link, okay? And so I selected something before on my computer. So that's what I want them to listen to. So the text to display, you can choose, right? It's an NPR listening. And then you paste the link here, okay? And now they have this clickable link. So you can check always from the eye, the side of your students. Oh, she was, this is why I, so sections, remember to do it at the end because now each time I, I need to do anything, everything before getting to the next page. Um, all right, come on, uh, where is it? Well, I cannot see it. Um, yeah, because it is part three. So anyway, um, you you your students will see that, and it's a clickable link, so they can just click and it will open up what you want them to listen, right? So you have that, and maybe you want to add the photo of the lady. So what can you do? You can look on Google Drive, right? Maybe you can, or you can copy, you can download that on your computer. And then you can use the upload as we did before. So it comes from your computer or it is about, what is it about? Oh, it's about seizure. It's not very fun. Can you show us again how to add the link? Yes, I can totally do that. Oh, so let me see. Oop. So oh, I will delete that. So remember you have this uh, kebab here uh, and you can just go down, down and you delete. Yes, no, it will delete my whole section. So I will just remove the link. Okay, so up, it is empty. I click here. So you can do it anywhere, actually. You can add a link anywhere, but very often what I do is that they, they have the listening at the beginning and then they have five questions about the listening. So this is why most of the time I add it in my section. So I decided that it was an NPR, okay. And then it is a listening. So you write that, or you don't have to write it, but you can write it and select, okay? And then you click on the link here, insert link. And I just copy and paste. So you come here, you copy the link from Google, and then you insert the link here and you say, okay. And then when you click, it opens the window. So for upper levels, it is very good because I, I have a lot of listening tests. Um, so I insert 
um, a lot of um, listening. So sending to a Google, a, a Google like a, a web page, uh, you can also just send to your own drive. Like for example, we have some level advancement tests and we have maybe, I don't know for the, so it's three month test. So we have maybe five recording or six, six recording and they are on my Google drive and you can add whatever you want. So any sound from your Google drive, like if I want to add this one, for example, it's an audio, you, you can just like get the link, right? Up and then you copy and then you're done. And once again, let me add a question. And in this question, I want a link. So it will be audio, right? And I just paste the link from my drive and it is the same and it will open when I click. Yeah, it will only play my audio recording, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So you can add from the internet, you can add from your own Google Drive. Uh, it depends on what you want to do. Let me just delete this question I don't need. So everything here is explained in this one. When you add some, uh, you open a window, you add the link, and then you add the link here. And after that, this is what your students see, right? They have line underlined in blue, and so they should know that it's a clickable link. Um, all right, so adding sections, we did that. You can add as many sections as you want. I advise you not to add too many uh, sections. Uh, so here, for example, I would like to get rid of this one because I added for nothing. So I will just move my question up to my grammar part, okay? Here and then here. And then I can, oh, I can move this one too. Come on. Okay. And then I can delete that. Up. So it will tell me, yeah, so that I have part one and then part two, and then it works again. So it is nice to add sections. Remember to add it once your form is completely done so that when you want to test it, you don't need to complete everything each time and you don't have problems at the end. Um, all right, so we added some questions. We saw how to add some um, sections. Ah, yeah, I forgot to show you that. So let me show you that. So up here. Yeah, so I am here. Oh, yeah, question? No. Okay, so I am here, right? So this is my section number one, okay? So after section one, they continue to the next section. So you can ask, you can decide the order, but I really don't see why I, I create my, I create them in the order. But if for example, one day you want them to skip one section, you can do it. So you click here, right? Normally by default, it is continue to the next section. So I do that. And here you have a little carrot. And if you click on the little carrot, it is the same. Oh yeah, it's the same actually. Okay. so. And what did I want to say? So that, yeah. So you can choose um, what is the next one coming, but usually it is just the next section. Uh, so that's not super important, but then what is here? Ah, yeah, so that's, that's really good. It's a good feature. And I actually nearly discovered it while I was working on my slides. So here, collapse section. So if you click here on the two little carrots, one up and one down, you have all your questions. So in one uh, like glimpse, you can see all your questions from part number one about grammar, right? So you can see that you have five questions. And then if you want to work more, you just click on them and it opens right away. What is cool here is that mm, I think that question four would be much better before question three. It's very easy to move the order here. Very, very easy. Whereas if it is big, Sometimes it's not very easy when they are like, like that, for example, to move up and down, it is not very convenient. So let me do that here. Up, I click and I have synonyms and I would like my negative or positive to be first so I can just move around, all right? Um, so I think we saw all the things here, right? Import question, you add a video, you add an image and then you create some sections. 
Um, so that's how your students see your board. So that's done. Okay, let me see where we are here. Now, uh, about the responses and how to see them. So I have three people, three responses, okay? So first, when you open your um, responses file, you will see the name of your students, right? And you have three, so you should have three email address, okay? And then either you move, oh, sorry, yeah. So what have I done? Question, summary, summary, okay. So we are here, summary. Um, no, we were in individual. Okay, so it opens apparently like by default individual. So let's stop with that, it doesn't matter. So I see the score right away, okay? And this is like, Basically, what your students see when they submit, after that, they can see their answers, and this is where they see their answers. So, for example, there is one mistake here, okay, and then here there are three. So, that's, that's what they see. And for you, if you want to have a more global vision of the form, you can come here. So, here you see that your students did not very good, right? Because one had 30, one had 40, and one had 60. So, and the, 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 the question is over 65. So one, so it's, it's good to see that because it tells you, for example, if you teach, if you quiz a grammar point, it's very easy to see if they understood or if they didn't understand. So that's a very neat feature. Then you have the worst question, like the one they missed the most. Uh, for some reason, nobody likes, Question number three, and if you click, it shows you that, yes, you have two wrong answers and one, uh, two good answers and one wrong answer, okay? And if you click on that, no, it doesn't do anything. So I like, I like that because it, it tells you like a lot about um, the, the global understanding of your students. And here you can collect the score. So I usually make my, over 100, 200, 300. Here I need to do some like statistics and like um, uh, percentage and I don't really like that. So usually I ask 20 questions, five points or 10 questions, 10 points. And then you have over 100 and you can just copy your grades and you are done. And so if I want to see Yasmin answer, I will click here and then it goes to her. If I want to see, the other respondent answers I just need. And again, like if, for example, I want to talk to Barbara and I want to see how she responded. And so you can very easily discuss, hey, so Barbara, what happened with number four? And then it's very easy to see what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and I like that too. And to be honest, you just come here and you have all the grades. So it is maybe a little longer to create, but then to grade, it takes zero time because basically you just need to copy your grades. So that works very well. I have only 10 minutes left. Um, so student answer, we did that. Um, what is that? Do we need that? Okay. So one final thing, your, it's a quiz. And whoever doesn't answer in 30 minutes cannot answer after that. So after 30 minutes, you just click here. Accepting response, you don't accept responses anymore so that the students, they cannot reply after the given time. So I think it is also good um, if it is like something to do at work, at home, for example, to make sure that they do it by a given time, it is good to choose here. So accepting response, it is everywhere, right? No, it is not here. So you find it only in responses. Accepting response, so you will find it here, all right? And then before uh, I answer any questions, I will show you very quickly because that I don't particularly use. You can create a sheet. So you click here and you say create, and then it creates a Google sheet. And then you see all the questions and how your student answered. Um, so to be honest, I won't like stay long here because I really never use it. Um, I use a lot that, like individuals, right? To make sure, you know, and they tell me, um, so just to finish with that. So I love 
forms for all these reasons, because it is easier and faster to grid. You have a very big variety of questions, and I really like that. You can add some images, you can do like grids, you can do simple questions, fill in the blanks, definition, really a lot. It's environmentally friendly. You don't print out anything at all. It is clearer most of the time than paper copy because you know, yeah, and it saves a lot of paper. And then students ask questions about their error because when they complete and they submit, they want to view their score. And when they view their, their score, they view also their mistakes. And so for example, this student can tell me, Selena, I have a question about number three. And so we go to number three and I'm like, okay, so here you see, because it is prediction, so you can use be going to and you can use we. So you have one missing answer. So they are more engaged than ever. Whereas when you give a paper copy, you give them, they don't care when you give them back, they never check. And also it saves time, it is not written here, but you never have to review because they come to you with the questions. If everybody answered properly to question one to 20, you're not saying anything about question one to 20. They will just tell you where they have problems. So that's something I really like. So it's very easy to share because I didn't explain that, but let me show you. <laughs> so let me open my Google Classroom. Um, so I want to add this quiz, right? So I am here, send. And then I will be here as we did before, right? You will copy the link, okay? And then in your classroom, so I will add whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, and you just create, for example, an assignment, you add your link and then you add and you click here and you say quiz, okay? And then you can assign and that's it. And, and your students, they will see that. Um, I am a little obsessive about the nice night, like I want everything to be quite pretty. So what I do, because I don't like this big square in the middle. So if you don't do that and you're in the question, right? If you copy that URL and then you post it here, and instead of edit, because, oh gosh, you really don't want your students to edit, you type sharing view. Sharing view, add the link, ta-da, and this time it is very pretty. And then you add your title. So I can, I can answer any questions. You have my email address. If you have questions about that later, I can answer that. But it's very easy to share. You just basically copy the link. You send it by email. You send it by WhatsApp when you have some absent students. It's very, very easy to share. I like it. Uh, diversity of question, immediate reasons, that's really good uh, for your students. Uh, possibilities with image, you can give feedback, which is very good. It is mobile friendly, which is good. Easy to modify. It is very flexible in terms of score point section. And then a lot of students ask questions about, actually all of them, they are like, I have a question I don't understand. And then I think that's all and I think I'm done. So if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask. And while you are thinking about it, maybe I can show you a few of the one I have created. I have two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, um, uh, these are all of the forms that you created, but is there yeah. a place like a Google library of of quizzes? I know I don't think so. Okay. Like um, no, like but let, no, no, it's not like quizzes or yeah, I know for like it is quizzes on Squidlet, right? You can you can use the one that exists or like in Kahoot. No, you need to create your own or you can share like um, um for example in my school we have two teachers teaching level five. So I have some quiz and then I just share so you can add collaborator here, right? On the send, it is the way to share it. So, oh no, it's the like here, sorry. The, um, the kebab menu, so you just scroll down and then you have add collaborator. And so you can add some email addresses, right? And then the people, they can be again, let me add my good friend Yasmin. You can decide that she's an editor so that she can also modify it and then you send to her and she can use it as well. 
Um, they can use, you can use it with multiple classes and it doesn't matter because the response is you will all see your students, right? So it works very well. Uh, any other question? Um, for the for the quiz, if you wanted to set a time, is there like a where you can put a timer that sh will show up on the quiz so that they could know that they're you know the time's running out? A little clock. So I have the thing that it is what I said that I never use. So let me see um, because at one point there was some time somewhere. So let's add the question, and if we choose that, what is that? I don't know. I don't think so. Anybody knows? Like Grazia, I know you use it a lot. Do you know that? Because what I do is that I Not use it sure. in my class. Yeah. I use it in my classroom. And in your classroom, you can give a deadline. So that's where I'm going to do it. Uh, because all that I share with my students in the classroom. You can share it in Canvas. You can share it wherever you want. And then you, uh, let's see, like, for example, I'm pretty sure I have one here. Um, okay, so you have it here. So here, no, in the classroom, you will decide to give a deadline, right? So you choose the due date, and then you choose the time. And then when, after that, normally they cannot answer anymore. Or you decide, as we saw before, right? So you go to responses, and you do that. I'm not accepting any responses from now on, right? The class is over. I don't want you to finish at home. Like, you know, if you didn't have time, never mind. Uh, I hope it answered your question, but I don't have the feeling that there is a timer for Google shortcut add-on. So yeah, so um, any other questions? So I hope it gives you the desire to use it. Look at that, <laughs> I use it a lot. So I use a lot of like, I change the, the, the image at the top. This is for example, an image from, uh, from Google. So it's, it's a very good way to quiz for grammar, to quiz for comprehension. Like for example, here it is like, let me open this one. So it is, as I told you, like you have the little video, it's a TED ad, and then I ask questions, like, right? So that works very well for uh, listening. Um, let me show you for a listening quiz. It works also very well. So you have here and then recording, right? So they click here and up, it plays the recording. And when they listen to the recording, they can answer the Form, all right, and here I didn't use sections, I just used titles. So it's really up to you if you want sections or titles. Um, and yeah, I use basically all the types of questions possible also because you don't want your students to face always the same possibilities, right? Um, all right, I think I have shared everything I wanted to share with you. I can uh, add the links to the Jamboard presentation so that if you want to have it later, you can. So I am posting them in the chat, all right? So you can open and then you can make a copy. There's an ad um, called Form time available from the Google Workplace Marketplace. Okay, so if you put an add-on to your Google Chrome, apparently you can use a timer. So yeah, it's a good feature. If you give it, for example, and you're not here, or if you give it at home, right? If they need to complete it, like if it's a homework. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not very like strict about deadlines. So for me, as long as they do it, I think I am happy. <laughs> So this is why I never try to find out if there is a time. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. And so you have it, you have the presentation in the in the chat. So feel free to make a copy and then to use it later slowly. And 
but use it. It is really cool and students, they really like to answer quizzes on a Google form. They really enjoy it. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And then maybe I will see you next year. <laughs>